you and your team refer to the program as like an Iron Man suit, where it's uh, where it's like co-creation, correct? Like you are you're still in control of the program. You're still guiding it to the to the path that you wanted to get to. Yeah, um, that's that's where you know the, the early feedback that we got. And the reason why I feel like we're being quite successful now is 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 the architects were saying, okay, like this thing is great at the logic that it does, but the logic that it does is acontextual in certain ways. And so if you think about the criteria for what a great building actually is, you know, it's not just that it stands up, like a good building is strategic. It's systemic, yeah. it's sustainable, it's beautiful, it's experiential, it's meaningful. Most importantly, it's contextual. So what we have is a, a situation where they're able to reach into the model, the generated model and edit it. And that was you know, kind of new, uh, circa 2017. Um, and we call it manual mode, but it's like, like you know, when you build a block and like remember back in AutoCAD days, you're building a block and you've got like <clears throat> some parametrics associated with it. And, you know, it's great. Like while you have the block with the parameters in it for what it does at the time, but eventually you might need to explode it to remove pieces of information that are already in it that are superfluous or whatever. So all we do is we, 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 we have like, you know, the ability to explode that model into basic components and then edit those um you know in a more still being linked setting. to the main model correct it's not disconnected yeah. when you do that no it's the parameters persist okay so after someone has tweaked the model to a, like a massing model that they are comfortable with but that they see potential in how did they proceed from that step do they export it and use it in revit or any other so it, de it it really depends upon where you're at in the process um, so TestFit has been fortunate to have customers from the architecture background, the engineering background, construction and development. So everybody is <clears throat> using the feasibility tool for slightly different reasons. So if, if you're an architect that, you know, our core architecture group is people that typically are not getting paid for feasibility studies. Okay, well, that's a great incentive to automate them and make them more effective. Um, and the development side is people that do not get their feasibility studies for free from architects. You know, we've got pretty good product market fit with them. And what we enable them to do is to look at sites and to kill off stuff that doesn't work um, before, before they are willing to spend the five to 15 grand, you know, that an architect is going to bill for a whole, you know, feasibility SD package. Uh, construction, they're interested in getting quantity takeoff. They're interested in getting the information about a deal to the development client, you know, from a construction lens. So construction cost, uh, solving the building with specific means and methods in mind, uh, like modular. Uh, so, you know, to answer your question, like, yeah, you can use it to, to jumpstart a rabbit process if you'd like, but in reality, 90% of deals and tests it are going to die. Like, that's just how it works. You know, fees, like, this is why we have feasibility is to figure out whether or not it should go in SDs. That's tricky. Cause you have to, you talked about quantity takeoff. So you have to design the software all the way to that level, even though another client like the, the the developers would only use it for massing yep wow. yeah it's 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 perplexing to the vc world why we would build you know features for architects that developers want to use and features for developers that uh the contractors are interested in and features for the architects that you know frankly are like are pricing you know um we're getting to a place where people in our generation want to be more interconnected. They want to understand the perspective of their clients. They want to understand how they can serve their clients better. And democratizing this information, like this is why it's democratized. Like our, our goal is to try to explain to developers, architects, general contractors, everybody that's kind of working on the deal together, what's going on in the deal. Um, and right now it's quite opaque. 